Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds, we are back again. I am here with Valentine or Valentin, depending Valentine on... Valentine is fine. Depending on Hi. where you meet you, if you're in the States <laughs> or Canada. Exactly. Or in Europe. So, well, well, thank you for having me. Yes, yes. So, I've been following you on Instagram, and I you did a post. It's so funny how different people connect with you. Obviously, I like the spear fishing. We have a fishing company. And you did some post, and I still remember it. You were on like a sidewalk. Do you remember this? And it had something to do with your anxiety. Yes. And as soon as I read it, I was like, because I dealt with a lot of anxiety in my life. And I was like, wow. And then I went and saw that you had a TED Talk. I was like, how does this girl have a TED Talk? <laughs> and I watched that, and it was awesome. And so I learned all about the anxiety you dealt with and, and almost drowning it. 14 years old or something? Yes. I was uh, swimming in the side of France with my parents, yeah. and I got caught in an underwater current. I passed out. The lifeguard had to come save me. The helicopter took me to the hospital. And after that, for about 10 years, I was petrified of the ocean. I, I, so, I hated it. So this was salt water? Was yes, this, it was okay. salt water, yes. And so this wasn't like, oh, I swallowed a bunch of water and almost drowned. You legitimately almost died yes pretty much I, wow. I, I i i lost consciousness Whoa. in the water you got to tell that story more because i did not know that <laughs> it's crazy so so that was 14 yes and you did not go near the ocean for a while after that no i didn't i mean i i, I could go to the caribbean and have water maybe to my ties yeah. and just swim a little bit around yeah. but i would never go in anything deep water no waves no currents as far as away as I kid. But you knew how to swim. I, I know how to swim, yeah. Just weren't confident. I'm not, I'm not a great swimmer, <laughs> but I can swim. <laughs> you're not a great swimmer? <laughs> I'm not a great swimmer, Whatever. no. Whatever. <laughs> and you're going down like, what, 80? or how, how deep can you dive down? 170 feet. What? <laughs> 170? Yeah, that's, that's my deepest dive. That's unbelievable. All Thank right. You. So I want to keep talking about that for a second because I'm fascinating, fascinated on how – Someone like you could be like deathly afraid of swimming in the ocean, and like you didn't have a long breath hold from what I heard like on the Joe Rogan show, right? Like you were, right? Like no, you couldn't actually, even my 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 first time when I went diving, I was having panic attacks underwater. I was so scared. I was not feeling in my place whatsoever. But it's it's it was a long process. Yeah. But it's it's the ocean that was scaring me. A lot actually became my home after a few years. That's so. crazy. So in the, when you first started, you can't hold your breath very long. You're having a panic attack. And like, <laughs> how did you get past this? Like this. So basically it, it was, I, 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 I'm a foodie. I, I love food more than anything in the gonna world. We're going to talk about your cookbook <laughs> a little bit later. And I, I, I didn't really like the whole process of spearfishing. But what I really fell in love with was the whole catching my own food. Okay. So the first fish I ever caught, I'm going to remember my whole life, it was It was a pretty shit fish. <laughs> it was it's not very good talking. Oh, sorry, can I say? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was a pretty bad fish, not very good tasting. But just the fact that I caught it myself, that it was sustainably caught, we had an amazing day that day. We brought it back to shore. We grilled it on the beach. It just stays to like a million dollars. And where were you? At this I point? was in Ascension Island. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a legit place to dive. <laughs> yeah, pretty Dang. much. And that was, that was actually my first time spearfishing. What? <laughs> and you shot a crappy fish. Kind of, yeah. What was it? It was a blackjack. Okay. So not very good eating. I still ate it because I was just so happy to have yeah, caught yeah, my yeah. first fish. And then it's just I just fell in love with that. And for me, it, was just, it became all about the food but the problem was still that i was panicking in the water and i was not feeling comfortable but i love the final product so much that i, I was telling myself okay you have to push yourself because yeah. this is too fantastic to let go yeah so i kept going in the water and then what i did is i was going in the water for 15 minutes then half an hour then 45 minutes then two hours so i gradually kept doing it and yeah. at some point you know when you see that nothing is happening then this is when you can't for yourself bidding in yeah. building in sorry and so it's really by little by little that i managed to to actually be comfortable and 
at some point, it shift completely. I was really scared of the water, and now I was liking it more and more and more and more and to yet. the point that now, if I'm fishing, it's really hard to get me out of the water at the end of the day. <laughs> so how old were you when when you got comfortable? Like when did you first start diving? Do you remember? I first started diving in 2011, so okay. it's still pretty recent. Yeah, yeah. And um, it took me a good two, three years. It took a long time, but at that stage, I was still working in a hedge fund in London, so my lifestyle was far from anything that was near the yeah. water, so I didn't have the chance to, to, to be in it as, as much as I would like to. So let's let's talk about that, because that's a whole different <laughs> part of the story than we'll get back into spearfishing. So you went to school to be an attorney? Yes. But he- okay. And so So I went to law school in Canada. Okay. Then I make my master in Montreal also. And there was something that was keeping me from jumping into the system. I, I felt I just felt that it, it I was not on my place whatsoever. So I had the chance to have a French passport because my dad is French. So I jumped on a plane and I decided to move to London. Hmm. I moved to London with about two thousand dollars in my pocket, thinking that Your, after euros or dollars, uh, dollars, okay. Canadian dollars too. So Cana- <laughs> even worse, <laughs> even Sorry, way way worse. Canadian listeners. <laughs> and then I got to London, thinking that within two months I'm gonna have found an apartment and a job. Of course, after two months I still have no jobs and no apartment. But you had a degree at this point. But I had a degree, okay, okay. so I decided to start doing a conversion course to be a, a lawyer in, in in the UK because. I wanted to be a lawyer my entire life. So for me, there was no way that this was the problem in my life. It's not. It's, it's been my dream since I was a child. And why? why? I don't know. My mom is a lawyer, and yeah. I just always, it's, you know, I've, I'm a little bit argumentative, just a bit. So you wanted to be like a trial <laughs> lawyer? like in, Yes. Okay, okay. So I, I study, I specialize in criminal, which is what I really like. Yeah. And so, of course, I, I, I kept going my studies in it, thinking that this could never be the problem. You know, when you want to do something or yeah. told to be – to do something your entire life, just you never put it in question. But then this is when I realized that it was actually not for me. And there's no way I could spend the next 40 years behind a desk reading and reading and reading and reading. But I didn't know what to do. So what I did is I started working in finance, which I really enjoy. It was challenging. It was different. But then again, it's then at that stage, I started spearfishing. So my life is just in this middle of this weird transition where I, I'm a girl. I'm a, I'm a girly girl. <laughs> yeah, er, earlier she's about to go spearfish. She's got to get, hurry up and get my nails done here before <laughs> you leave. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes, I'm going to pay you back right now. <laughs> but then it's, it's, it's all of a sudden I was switching my holidays to going and fun destinations on the beach with my friends yeah. to – going camping in a super remote area to catch my own food. And did you do that with your parents? Like were your parents outdoor, outdoorsy? We went camping a few times when I was a kid, okay. but it was never about, definitely not really about the food. I've never been an, an outdoorsy girl growing up. Okay. And it's, so I was kind of discovering this entire new side of me that I, I didn't even know existed. So I was living in, in London when I had, a nice apartment. I have a brand new Mercedes. So you're, you're I had a nice good job. Money. I was I, I I was very comfortable, and my okay. life was was pretty good. But then I keep every time I was going on those fishing trips. When I was coming back, I kept feeling even more unsatisfied with my life. And not only that, but I also felt that I couldn't connect with people around me. Hmm. All of a sudden, I was like, I I, I don't care about your new job and what you bust. I, it's not. It's just. And then all I could talk about was only my, my my fishing trips and it was I was just, just fast it was and fascinating they didn't get to it. me no they thought i was crazy yeah and, and then when you say fishing are you, do you mean uh these ca- are you camping and fishing and yes. spear, spear, spear fishing, fishing yes. the whole thing okay yes okay and then at some point in 2016 i got hired to film a documentary and it was in south africa okay it was about 10 days of filming and i was paid like 300 dollars for 10 days it was ridiculous <laughs> so you basically lost money Pretty much. No, they paid for everything, at least. Oh, okay, okay. Thank God. But then when I came back uh, to London, I was sitting at my desk, and I was just telling myself, wait a minute. I just got paid to do something really, really cool. So why would I not make this my actual mm. job instead of losing my time trying to do what? To get a raise so I can get an even new Mercedes the following year or get a few more square square feet in my in my apartment yeah. it's just I, and this is when it hit me like i'm working for the wrong reasons i'm working to get 
things to watch and press people that I don't even really like actually because I can't even connect or discuss with them. Mm. So I decided to quit everything. I sold everything I had and um, I grabbed my two sausage dogs and we moved to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you have at the point at this point? I besides, had besides about your Mercedes. So I bought about three thousand dollars. Okay. US yeah. this time. All right. I bought a car. Okay. And I rented an apartment for a month. Telling myself, I'm here, come hire me, I'm awesome, please, the contract is going to fall on my head, it's going to be super easy, let's just do it. What was the goal? What were you trying to get? I, I, I have no clue. Okay, I, was okay. just, I was just that's so good, ecstatic. That's a good plan. <laughs> I was exactly, super good plan. I was just so ecstatic to, live, to, to leave this whole life behind. Yeah, so yeah. When I got to Florida, I was, I was kind of a cloud, just thinking, just being so happy that I managed to detach myself from everything. What I did not know was how about how I was about to embark a pretty big journey, which would be way harder than, than I thought it would be. So the first year was rough, to say the least. And <laughs> yeah, what city are you in now? I was in Fort Lauderdale, a little bit around everywhere where people would have me on their couches, and, <laughs> which is really hard because I don't know anybody in Florida. <laughs> So at some point, I, I had to sleep on my car because I didn't know anybody and I didn't have money. I have Dang. only like $300 left. There's no way I could spend that on a hotel room and I needed to eat. So you, how many nights did you sleep in a car? Uh, for about like two, three weeks, something like that. Wow. It was sometimes when I was going to meet people and I was like, oh, do you mind if I sleep on your couch tonight? And it was, it was pretty embarrassing for me and it was, it was really hard especially like mentally because I just quit a life that was so easy yeah. and where I have access to everything and it was just so comfortable and I was just never missing anything. Wow. And then here I was in Florida with my two dogs living in my old shitty car eating mac and cheese from Walgreens. What were you feeding <laughs> your dogs? Uh, the little canned stuff that they have at uh. Walgreens. It was so bad. Look, my dogs were actually fed raw meat the entire time. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had a good life. So we're, when actually you were give my do I had to give my dogs away, uh, which was one of the – that was my, my hardest yeah. sacrifice that I did on a personal level. They just started getting aggressive and started biting people, so I thought that I uh, knew that this life was not made for them, so I couldn't – there's no way I could it – it would be selfish for me to have killed them. Wow. So, yeah. So why you're going through this – do you do you can you can you see any of this happening like what you're doing now like did you have this vision that I'm going to be in making money fishing and spear fishing or you not at all at, at that stage I'm first of all my parents are on my bag being like have you lost your mind what are you doing this is crazy because your mom's an attorney you said it right yes so she's expecting you to go and and you were doing it I mean you had the degree. exactly and uh. she she was like what's off my hand do whatever you want. And so I was, I was, I was struggling, struggling until at some point I just realized it's like, okay, like it's your life is not going to change. You're not going to build a company by sitting there and hoping that people are going to contact you. It's like, he, I, and you need to start working. Yeah. And at that stage, I was exactly that. I was trying to figure out, okay, like I, I need to do something because this, this is not working. I'm not going to spend the next 20 years of my life like struggling to eat. Yeah. Did you try? Did you do bartending? Like you do any of those? No, no, I didn't. Okay. I was I was getting like really small gigs everywhere. I was taking pretty much anything, mm. like bikini shoots and stuff like that. That is, I was definitely not interested in. And yeah. Especially being trained as a lawyer, you know, I felt that for me it was such a, I, I mean, it's like it was such a step down, I guess. And it's especially when it comes to to society's perception, you sure. know. So we do for a living. I'm a lawyer. What do you do for a living? I live in my car and I fish. <laughs> <laughs> do a bikini shoot here slightly there slightly different <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah but then but even though it never occurred to me to go back never once i i, I thought that i was making the wrong decision wow i was broke as hell but i was so happy i was what? still waking up when i wanted to go okay then i was making friends i was going fishing and i was there's something i was really liking and I really wanted to, to talk about a bunch of stuff and sharing what I was doing with, with people. And then this is when I told myself, okay, like you cannot keep doing that. Like you're going to have to sit your ass down and yeah. actually work and work and work and work. And by exploring different options, I, I discovered passions of mine that, that I didn't know were there. And 
So this is sustainable food sourcing was one of them. So when I started at Spit Fishing first, I was very attracted with having the biggest fish and being sure, the best yeah. at it. That's so the question you probably get, right? What's the biggest fish you've ever killed? That's pretty big, actually. It's a marlin. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> it was um, – so people told me, well, if you want to do that, you know, if you want to get better at Spit Fishing, you have to learn from the best. So I traveled, tried to found a traveling company to fund – uh, my trips, yeah. I was staying on, on people's couch and I was just being in the water with the best people I can find, shutting my mouth and yeah. listening. So di- at this point, did you have an Instagram account? Like, were you anyone? Yeah, I in- did. Okay. No, okay. it was, it was kind of low. Not to say you weren't anyone, no. but you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> no, no, exactly. No, it was They weren't in- reaching out to you saying, oh, we have to have you on the boat. No, exactly. Okay. No, it was, it was me trying like yeah, yeah. hustling trips here and cool. there and I mean, I still have about 40000 at that stage, so I, I still have a little bit of, of, of leverage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to dive everywhere in the world to dive to the best fisherman I could find. And I, all I wanted to was learn and be mentored and just become as good as I could. Yeah. And I, keep, I kept taking free diving classes to become better and better and better. And then when I thought that I had a level that was strong enough, then this is when I had to realize, okay, well, what do I want to do with your life? What actually passionates you so you're still not making money at it sorry you're still not really making money at this point it was i am you're making i can okay. i can survive okay, okay i okay. can survive you're not living I'm in your not car. gonna have a brand new mercedes anytime soon yeah. but I'm, I'm surviving i can eat i can pay my rent and yeah. that's so all of that that's fine yeah. but it's just I'm, I'm really far from my goal but by by trying to to get different gigs too i really realized that so the sustainable food sensing was very interesting and in that what was very important to me, because, you know, when you live and you take a step back and you live in very precarious conditions, yeah. y- you don't have a choice than to make an introspection. And you have to look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, okay, what kind of person I am? And I'm not going to lie. I saw a lot of stuff that I didn't really like. So it was and attractions for, for the wrong things, and which was, you know, it's when I was making a lot of money, I have $20,000 worth of shoes probably. It's, it's, uh, and it's you know, like I wanted status. I wanted, I wanted to impress people around me. Yeah. And then I realized very quickly that, so when I was in high school, I was bullied pretty badly. Uh, about what? It was I changed school, and I arrived like maybe mid-high school, and... I was like dating this guy and this girl didn't like her and she was like the cool girl in school. So it was, I didn't have friends for about two, three years in high wow. school. Like it was, it was pretty bad. Like I was getting spit on. I have to like enter by the janitors to like, nobody wanted to see with me. So it was, it was, it was really like a period of my life that it really didn't give me any confidence in myself. So Jeez. when I started working and I started picking a career, this is when I was like, you know what? I'm going to be lawyer. I'm going to like screw you, every single one of you. I'm better than you. So yeah. it's kind of, I kind of developed this whole uh, feeling of wanting to be better than everybody and wanting to be admired and loved and all of that. And then, so when I was living in my car in Florida, that's when I realized I said, wait, I don't give a crap what those people think. Like yeah. it's like, I know, like I'm happy in my boat fishing then just be in your boat fishing. And that's it. It doesn't matter if I drive a, a terrible car falling apart it doesn't really <laughs> matter because i'm happy then they're probably not anyways yeah so i have to reconsider all of my value in the person that i really was and so by traveling to a lot of remote locations like especially africa and in remote communities so i realized that so not only the feeling of community was really important but that you know being a good person and sharing yep. and just taking care of people around you and it's something that society doesn't really push people to be so I completely changed mentality. I changed, I mean, not personality, not to be that far, but it's yeah. still like it's, it's I completely, completely transformed myself. And then I started re- reevaluating my goals and what I wanted in life. And having ambition was definitely one of them. And yeah. I could feel it. I wanted to build something that I was proud of and that would make my kids proud. And it's just because I wanted my own feeling of, of accomplishments not yep. because I wanted to impress other people. So this is when I really took my company to another level and start being like, okay, like stop messing around. And I worked and worked and I spent hours behind my computer trying to reach out to people and 
I still do that and I still get a lot of no's yeah. or no response at all. <laughs> but you know, you only I only need one or twice a month that says yes and wants yep. to collaborate and do something with me. And there's bigger companies and I can feel that when I'm working them, then I can make a difference. And this is, it's, this, this is priceless. I'd rather, when I get messages on Instagram of people that either talk to me about the fact that they were bullied at school and don't know what to do anymore. And, that are people that they had anxiety and they, they, they're not sure that life is worth living again yeah. or people that are messaging me because they hate their job and they know what to do and they don't feel like they, they just they, they don't feel like they belong there and I'm I'm, I'm trying to, to explain those people you know like it's it's, it's you, you, you can do whatever you want with your life if you push yourself it's I started my life being scared in my living room of getting out because I had anxiety and then having no friends in high school because nobody wanted to be seen with me even though nobody knew yeah. me and then it's so it was you know it's you, you go through those stuff and it's it's yeah it's hard but talking to somebody and touching people yeah is this I think this when I get those messages it makes me so happy yeah and we talked about it offline just the feeling of knowing you're not alone right exactly you know that we're all going through something you know there's always something going on in our journey of life Yes. And I, I love to hear, because you mentioned it earlier, I mean, society, one of the big problems is that we're a consumption society, right? I mean, from all the advertisements that we're hit on on Facebook and Instagram, yes. and like, we, we have to consume to keep this thing moving, this, you know, this big machine that we are, right? Yes, 100%. But, but you gave it all up, and now you, it seems like you're happier, meaning like you gave up the all your I mean you literally gave up all your stuff you sold it and now yeah. you have probably fewer things not my shoes I didn't sell my shoes <laughs> you still have all your shoes I still have all my shoes <laughs> you put them on a ship to bring them over <laughs> but so like you gave all that stuff up like did did how did that feel like did you did you feel like like you had more freedom being able to do all this stuff it felt good it felt liberating and it's I mean it's really hard like I have I mean I've I love to cook, so I like to get stuff for my kitchen and things oh, like that. Yeah. We all and do. Once again, I mean, it feels good to buy stuff. But now I think twice before I get something. And I'm, I'm really, I'm really going to use it. If not, I'm going to try to get rid of it or yeah. give it away yeah. too. But it's, that's also why I like living in, in my house here. Like, I don't, my room is not very big. So it's Only kind so of much you forcing me to to be selective well, now you're about all of a that. big enough status where you're getting stuff sent to you all the time, too, which is pretty <laughs> cool. Well, I think that also what I mean, what, one of the biggest problem um, with, with, with society is there's two things that they're not really talking about, and it's actually it's actually literally taboo to talk about it. And the first one is they don't want to talk about anxiety and the cause of it. Yep. And the second of all, they don't want to tell people that it's it can be normal that you don't feel okay or at your place in the normal nine to five jobs, and it's. You're not being taught as cool that being an entrepreneur, it's a solution. Yeah. It's you have this illusion that you have to be a genius. You have to b make this fantastic ideas. Or you're a and freak or something. Yeah, right? you have yeah, to yeah, be like something very special and out of the ordinary yeah. to, to, to start a company. But no, you need one thing to start a company. Yeah. One thing only. And that's not even money. That's passion. Yes. Because even if you have money, if you start something... You're going to be working Saturday, Friday night where your friends are drinking and are out and are texting you repeatedly, where are you, where are you? But no, you have to finish this because yep. you have a proposal to finish. You have this to get done. And it's, 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 it's all you need. <laughs> no, it's 100% true. <laughs> and I want to talk about that. I, uh, let's, let's hit up on the anxiety too. So yours happened at 18-ish, is that what you told yes. me? Around there? On my tea birthday. And how, how many years did you deal with it? It lasted about severely about two okay when i mean severely i mean not able to go into the grocery store not able wow. to go to a bar not able to take the subway always needing somebody next to me so i always needed an exit close to me i had to be able to leave in a car i had to be able to you know like yeah it's happened did you did you tell people like did your friends know or your family my closest friends knew okay did and I was did, only hanging know? out with those people. How did you know? What? What you had. Because I, I, I talked about it on the podcast. I For the longest time, I was so scared to tell people. 
and I, you don't really know what to search because your heart's beating. You feel like you're having a heart attack. You're like, yeah. what, do I, what do you even search? Like, did you go to a doctor? I went or? to the doctor. Okay, okay. okay. It's free in Canada. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> yeah, Canada. Yeah. <laughs> just, just don't throw away from Manitoba. <laughs> so, and you, what did you tell him? I feel like I'm dying. Yeah, I said, like, I have this, like, palpitation. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And I feel like my head is a bubble. I thought I was dying. I said, oh, my God, that's it. I have I probably have, can, I have brain cancer and it's something like that. Which makes the anxiety even worse, right? Exactly, because yeah, yeah. nobody talks about anxiety, right. and especially even less uh, a few, few years ago. <laughs> well, now well, not too long. <laughs> I think where you were going with this earlier is now it's it's taboo to talk about it, right? To have um, honest discussions and open, and now it's just like, oh, hey, take a pill, take Xanax, or the million different pills but out that's, there. That's the problem. It's 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 not taboo to have anxiety and take a pill, but it's taboo to have anxiety and talk about it. Yes. It's 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 ridiculous. It's easier just to take a pill and be stuck on them forever. It's I mean it's but it nothing against and I, I think I think some pills, people really need it. And I, it's, I agree. it's really hard. I agree. And I got I got fried on that on the podcast I did where I said I don't think anyone should take drugs and I I think that was incorrect advice. There's some people that that probably need it at least for a little while. Maybe. Yes. I, it, it, it yeah. it's a good trigger to start, but if if if, if you want to get cured, yes. a pill is masking the problem. That's it. The word cured. I'm not it. talking about depression here. I'm talking about panic attacks yes. exclusively. Yeah. Depression is a complete different ballgame. Yep. And if you have to go to the root of the problem, and it's, this is what I did. I, I went to see somebody for about two years, and you dig and you dig and you dig. And at some point, you're taking all the monsters out of your closet, and yep. it's, it's – you know, for me, it was clearly – to my years of bullying and a bunch of the stuff that happened, yeah. and it was, it was all of that, and you had to, you have to figure this out, and then after that, after two years of therapy, and went away and never came back, like never ever came That's back. That's awesome. Do these old high school friends know that you're kind of like a badass now. I don't know. <laughs> don't keep in touch with them. You don't. Hi. You don't go to your reunions. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, what were you? Were you like a? real skinny girl or do you look like because i mean you're obviously an attractive person you're like you, you can tell that you have that burning drive to do something big like it's i guess for me it seems weird to see someone like you like to say you got picked on in high school like what well, was it just because they you were new and they didn't like you i it was just you know high school it just takes one person yeah. to, to decide if you cool or not i guess yeah. so it was oh, that's crazy it was just a little bit complicated i guess and it was yeah I got beat up repeatedly, but that's good because now like, I can defend myself. <laughs> like in real fights. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's okay because, I mean, yeah, there were years that were horrible and they were definitely very fragile years of my life because I was a teenager. Yeah. And, you know, it's when you start building confidence and stuff. Yeah. And I had none of that and no friends either to talk about it. But I, I, I just took the best of it. Now I could never make fun of anybody. Yeah. I could definitely – not insult anybody on, online or anything like that or the same thing you know when people made negative comments online you get negative comments online i get a little bit like <laughs> i'm like uh <laughs> but it's it's yeah it's you have to work through that then yeah. it's it's i think it made me a better person overall yeah so and i'm happy about that so you had to face your fears with anxiety yes you had to face your fears with swimming and like right yes. i mean these are two really big things and then you had to quit your job and move to a place where you knew no one and basically face your fears of how the heck am I going to make a living yeah, like pretty how much. am I going to pay my bills <laughs> pretty what, much. which one was the hardest I mean they're all kind of interrelated a little bit but they're all, they're all different but it all came it's actually it actually kind of all came from I learned that from the panic attacks I guess because mm. you know when I refused to take medication my my way to do this was exactly the same as when I started spear fishing. I was just going a little bit further every day and going to a bar for 10 minutes and yeah. after 15 and getting to... So I kind of learned this mental process of dealing with my fears. But my fears are... I've always been predominant in my life. I, I grew up... I was scared of my own shadow as a kid. I was a skinny little, tiny little thing, scared of everything. My parents couldn't leave me alone at home until I was 12. Wow. Because I just couldn't stand out. I, I don't know. I was scared of teeth coming. It kidnapped me and just weird stuff. So it's, I mean, it's it, it was in me to be anxious. And 
So when people are telling me, yeah, I could never do what you do, it's too scary, I'm like, well, no, if I can do it, you do it. Because yeah. I'm the biggest wuss ever created. I'm a big, big wuss. And now you're swimming with sharks. <laughs> and now I see a shark, I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, yeah, you know, if, 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 if you work yourself, and it, that, that works on a personal or yeah. work level, if there's something bothering you or you want to change career or you know something something is not going on in in, in, in your relationship it's yeah. just you know you have to you have to tackle it and you have to do, it's not going to go away by itself no you have to work on your own mind and and make you stronger as a person because of course with everything that happened in my life my idea of me was that exactly that i, I was scared of everything and I'm, I'm 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 a weak person and there's no way i could accomplish any of that but then, you know, a day when I'm face to face with a shark and he's trying to eat me, I didn't panic. I didn't freak out. I, I, I stared right at it and I made sure it went away. And it's, you know, it's, it's, and I like to tell other people, you know, you may think that you're weak and that you couldn't do it, but put yourself in a hard situation and you're going to be so surprised at how yeah. amazing you are. I, I loved it in your, um, in your TED talk, actually. And we'll, yeah. put a, we'll put a link to that in the blog post. You said, what well, was towards the end, you said something about facing your own shark. Yeah. Like everyone has a shark, which is the fear, right? And it yes. could be the fear of, of a, uh, a relationship. It could be the fear of losing money because no one likes to go backwards, yes. right? Of judgment. Of ju Yes, of getting teased, which we, the bigger you get online, the more you get teased. We'll talk about that in a little bit too. <laughs> um, I, I, I love that because I, I, and I saw your latest post, it was today. You, what did you ask? Like, what's your dream job? What, what did, yes. what was the question? It was what you, what's your dream job and what's keeping you from doing it? And so I was reading the comments and a lot of them were flooding in, which was awesome. And that seemed to be the overall consensus with all these people had a fear holding them back. Every one of them, not every one of them, but many of them had some excuse. Money, most of it. Yeah. Or connections. Or I have this stuff. I, I saw that, meaning I, I, I already have he – I'm here and I have my family here and I can't leave them. I couldn't do my dream yeah. job because it's, it was an excuse. It's a fear, right? Something they have to – It is. I mean, like I mean, like I like telling people too, you know, it's if, if you – let's say you have a nine-to-five job. If you, if you spend from nine-to-five to working in your business, it's going to pick up at some point. Yes. Unless you're trying to be like an NBA player and you're five foot two, then it may not happen. <laughs> Maybe a horse jockey. Might be better <laughs> for you. But you know, it's if you're actually working in a business. You know, we live in a world where you have access to everything, all yeah. the tools. Everything is free online. Yeah. But then again, it's about. I get a lot of people telling me that, I want your life. It's so awesome. You have my dream life. You're so lucky. I, I I'm not lucky. I I sacrifice everything I have at work for to actually get what I wanted yeah. and again if do you want to go have friends with, with the, have fun with your friends on the weekend or you do want to work in a computer and, so you can go do that after sleep in your car for a couple that's that's the what they don't hear right or see exactly yes. and yeah. it's you know it's says oh I, I want to quit my job because I want to become a professional I don't know as anything yeah and then it's Saturday afternoon and you're watching three movies on Netflix yeah. it's it has to be like it's you have to figure out how much you really want it. And if you really want it, if you work for it, there's no way you cannot get that. Yeah. At least you're going to find different alternative of that. But it's, you know, even a super shit product with amazing marketing, you're going to sell anyways. Yeah. So it's all about putting the work and making yeah. the research. And, and if you have a good idea and a good product, it, it's surprising how easy it is to, to get money or get resources or find someone who will, who will even back you up. Even if you don't have friends and family with money, it's 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 shocking how easy it is to access money or people with money with a good idea or a good product, right? Yes. I mean, you have yeah. crowdfunding at work. Yes. You have a bunch of stuff. You have Kickstarters. Yep. You have a bunch of options online. So, yep. of course, also, I mean, a, a bunch of, of backlash that I got is when people look at, at, let's say, my Instagram and what I do. So, they have they, they have three theories. The first one is, oh, you have a trust fund. I don't have a trust fund. I really wish, myth, but I don't. Myth number one. Mid number two, you must have a sugar daddy that have pays for all of your stuff. I also wish, but no, I'm not into old men. <laughs> <laughs> and third of all, I must be a hooker. That's my favorite one. Seriously. Yeah. Huh. So it's they have this bunch of, but again, I think this is also very focused on being a woman. Yeah. And in the industry, especially in the entrepreneurship type of of area, there's still a very big. 
um, people have biased opinions and when oh, you yes. win in business and if you're starting to succeed, it's because you slept your way to the top or because right. that's, I mean, okay, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Yes, I may have got a few gigs because, because of the way I look, I guess. I don't like, I, I, it sounds so cocky. I hate saying that, but it's, but it also brought me so many bad sides to it. Mm. It's people think like, there's no way you can dive or for sure you're, you're having somebody else fish. There's no way you can do this yourself or you're not cleaning. Your, and th- there are girls that do it in the fishing industry or in the spear fishing industry that yep. do that. But it's, it's, it's you know, it's like I, l- I, I lost a lot of credibility and it actually happened to me about a week ago. I reached out to a big company and everything was fine and they said, you look, we look at the Instagram and there's like too much bathing suit. We're looking for more hardcore people. I'm like, you're looking for more hardcore people? I was like, I can't hunt 90 feet. Like, what? How, how much deeper do you want me to be hunting to be considered hardcore? And what, what do they say? I mean, I have friends that can do 120, but it's, it's you know, like, I, th- I think that's a good start. And they just, they did. After that, they just didn't stop. Crazy. And... I mean, it'd be one thing if you were in an office job. Yeah. Uh, let's just say you were a nurse or something, and your entire Instagram was bikinis, but you're in the ocean diving. That you wear a bathing suit, right? I mean, I rarely dive in a bathing suit. Well, I mean, you have. But it's I I, I mean I, I I live a tropical life. Yes. I'm always on a beach. I'm always on a boat. Yeah. So it's it's part of my life. So I do not believe that my Instagram is considered a bimbo account. I would not think so. Yeah. But it's it's. A photo that I'm in a bathing suit doing something very basic on a beach or holding something. I guess because I'm skinnier, it can look more sexual. That if you know it was a girl, that would look differently. Yeah, that's not so wrong. But <laughs> no, I get it. And and uh, so, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? A- as as an attractive female who has a big following, and I'm sure you see it, right? If you put a picture of you and just a bland black wetsuit with a fish, you're going to get a certain amount of likes. Yes. And then the say it could be, it could be the same fish. And now all of a sudden you have a bikini on you're tan and you got the right lighting. And all of a sudden it gets like double the likes. And, and we're all, I mean, we all have, even though we don't want to admit it, we all have that ego. I mean, yes. I do like, I like to get more likes who wouldn't like, how do you, you know what I'm saying? How do you, it, it's a tough thing with social media, it's you know? <laughs> I mean, it's I I I, sh- I had to sit down and think about it and say, okay, like what what kind of what kind of grow do I want for my own brand? Yeah. And I was like, okay, do I want to be perceived a, a certain way, or do I want to keep it more about what I do? Yeah. And then I made a decision to take a, of of being more authentic to who I was as a person, opposite to a rapid growth. But sorry, but. It's, it's 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 a hard decision to make because you know like I could have triple the amount of followers I have if I was just showing my ass every day. Yeah. But then it's really against the purpose of what I want to do. You know, I want to I want to be involved in policy changings. I want to actually make a difference and I want to help people. And nobody's gonna take me seriously. Is yeah. all I do all day show my ass and my tits. Yeah. But yeah. That's yeah. Because on the Joe Rogan show, he mentioned the. Oh, I won't have to mention the name of the of the company. Oh, it doesn't matter. Joe Rogan's already said it so it was the wall street journal yeah basically rejected you because of that so it, that's the tough part of it right of getting a rejection from a big company or brand because they st- all they see is is your last couple of pictures that might have a bikini on right pretty much but then it's 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 again like it's like it, it's who i am like i'm 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 i'm, I'm it's, it's what i look like it's, there's nothing i can do about it then right. yeah i'm often in, in a bathing suit and i like being in a bathing suit and i'm not going to tone down my own feminine side just because some conservative people don't like it yeah. it's you know what like what i actually do like about my brand and something that i want to share with people is that you can go spear fishing and gut a fish and fill it in and cook it and you can also like to wear heels and dress and and, and, and be a girly girl on yeah. some other sides it's you don't have to be the two of them and same thing for you know, you can be girly and then you can care about the environment. You don't have to know wash your hair and grow your uh, your armpits and, and wear a freaking poncho. Like you can like you can you can be different. You can wear different hats in, in life. And I, I want to embrace that. I want women to embrace the femininity in who they are yeah. and still being enjoy being a tomboy once in a while. 
Yep, I love it. All right, let's let's talk about the goals too. You mentioned, you know, you have this burning desire to do something big. You 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 know it's there. What what are your goals? Do you write them down? I do. I try to write them down yeah. every couple of months. They keep changing. Every couple of months. <laughs> yeah, something <laughs> like that. Well, I I'm working on different projects and yeah. I'm trying to see what's picking up, what's yeah. what's actually what is doable. My brain works constantly, so yeah. I write a lot of stuff down, and I'm like, okay, no, that's not gonna work. And um, but yeah, so I just started a recycled bathing suit brand with my sisters. We're still in the process of sampling; it's taking a lot of time. And um, so I'm gonna have spice and sauces line coming up. Cool. So it's just it's di- I'm working different little projects, just to see first of all if I like it, if yeah. I have any interest into doing that, and then that's uh, putting a bunch of pots or a bunch of lines in the water. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> putting up my mom, my mom's jokes. Um, so yes, it's putting different lines in the water and yeah. see what bites and what's what works the best. And but it's again, it's entrepreneurship. It's a lot of try and fails yeah. and try and fails and try and fails. And at some point, you know, it's I have super cool stuff that is starting to pick up. And but every project I have, I really like it. It's very important for me, and yeah. I have fun doing every single one of them. So for someone who's Take yourself back a handful of years. You're you've quit your job. Like you have this dream, which yours was kind of fuzzy, right? Like meaning you didn't have a plan, and I didn't either. I had zero business plan, which is looking back was like I can't believe I'm still around and paying my bills. <laughs> but for someone who maybe isn't that that in those shoes or has a plan, like what wh- what would be look now knowing knowing what you know now about social media, the power of it. How how can you make a living doing this? Like, how did you pay your bills the last couple of years? Like, it was a gradual process, I assume, because you don't have a sugar daddy or any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a hooker. <laughs> um, but it was, it was yeah, it was reaching out to people. And it's it's about, you know, it's if you have But, like, for what? Like, what do you mean by that? Just, like, how did you make money by reaching out to people, would you say? Oh, so it's collaboration. Okay, okay. Mostly. And then, you know, if you have something to sell... And it's it's about pushing what you have to give basically. Yeah. So you have to figure out, okay, what do I have to 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 give to people? Yeah. That it's skills or a product or anything. Or an audience. Or an audience, or exactly. And so then you're like, okay, I have this 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 to offer, yeah. and charge that amount, that amount, that amount. Are you interested? And are you doing speaking gigs too? Yes. Okay. I give conferences too. I started doing that, which I really really like. Yeah. Yeah, you and did that. That TED talk was good. And it pays a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, giving conferences is a good business. Yeah. <laughs> and all it takes, and if you haven't seen her talk, how was, is this 16 minutes or 14? 11. 11, okay. It's a short thing. And you're, I mean, it's just your story, right? Yes, it's it, just I think a, a lot story. of people think that, oh, I can never get paid to speak. It's of you everyone can. has a story, yes. at, right? I mean, everyone. And your story was what we just talked about it was you getting bullied and facing your fears and, and, Basically, just trying to pursue what made you happy. Yeah, pretty much. It was awesome. Thank you. And people were <laughs> clapping. And the <laughs> that would have been awkward if you did it. Yeah. So, so like, what <laughs> else? Cricket sounds. <laughs> so now it sounds like you mentioned the bathing suit thing with your sister, mm-hmm. the spices, cookbook, which we're going to talk about. Are you finding that create your own little products is 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 like the next step? Now that you have the audience, is like, all right. Are you listening to them and saying, "Hey, they gave me this idea," or like, "Where where are these ideas coming from?" Well, I like I like creating products because I don't feel that there's enough products to fulfill my needs right now. Got it. It's we still use a lot of plastics. There's a lot of stuff that I made with a bunch of chemicals. Yep. There's so many options of things that you can do to help the planet, and it's just, so when also when. I'm being asked, what can I do? I'm like, just go in the green stuff. There's so many options of things. Yeah. It's It can be as bad as a vacuum sealer, by example. They still don't have a recyclable, easy option for that. Somebody should make that up. There's a bunch of, you know, there's, there's so many products that are not good. Yeah. That you can, yeah. So, it's so let's talk about sustainable fishing and, and what you're – like you're, it seems like that's something you talk about a lot. You're passionate yeah. about it, and it's misunderstood too, right? I mean, what in what you do? Yeah, I mean, it's so frustrating. It's it's misunderstood in everything. So there's this massive iron curtain that exists between uh, where the food is from and how it gets to people's plate. Yeah, 
and people don't want to talk about it. They just want to wash their hands on it and not even care. They like sharing videos on on Facebook and on Instagram and being this is awful, this is awful. But it's it starts in your own home. It starts making different different choices. And there's also you see there's also companies that don't want to work with me because I kill fish and it's terrible. Because you're a hunter. Because I'm a hunter. Yeah. But it's this hunters that it's on the water and land. They're probably the people that contribute the most to conservation. And it, society needs to understand that. We okay. need to discuss where the food is from, how it was made, and how it was brought to people. Because right now, it's so taboo and nobody wants to talk about it. That means that the big corporation are very happy because yes. they're like they have this little dark little and they got a lot hole, of money and a lobbyist and, and yeah. everything is happy yeah. and it's nobody wants to you know it's like oh, okay that's fine ooh yeah. chicken breast for two dollars I'll grab that bogo exactly <laughs> so it's it's we're, we're we're targeting the wrong people there's about there's three groups of people as well you have or four groups of people you have the hunters and the gatherers you have the people who eat meat. And um, and seafood, and they care about what it's from. Yeah. You have the people who eat meat and seafood and don't give a crap where it's from, and you have the vegans. And w- where I know where you are now, I believe. Have you always been? No, normally I was. I was the pe- person that. It's not always necessarily because people don't care. It's because they don't have the information. Yes. Or too busy to to get information on it. They they don't care basically. Pretty much, like it's yeah. not—it's not the biggest thing on their mind. It's no, like, like I you mean, said, it's a good deal. Hey, I always was kind of excited about you know. Oh, I found grass-fed stuff. I heard it was good, so I grabbed that one. Yeah, but it's. But lit. what does that even mean, right? Like, it's grass-fed is actually pretty good, but when it's well done, but well, that's a different topic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's the problem is that the people who are fighting it's often the vegan and the people who don't care with the hunters. When it's it's when you think about it, it's like the the wrong people are fighting but yeah, it's the wrong against war. each other. Yeah, when yeah. it's it's not like we're on the same team, you don't yeah. you don't seem to notice it. But we're all actually on the same thing. We all want the same exact same thing. We want the planet to be you know to be a better place. Yeah. But it's like I don't know if you saw the, that documentary, the cowspiracy guy. No. It's like against meat eating. And I was like, oh, okay. I've heard he done something about, he was working in a document called the fish piracy. So I contacted him straight away. And I said, oh, like I've, I've been to a bunch of places and I've seen a lot of stuff in the fisheries and I, I have really good insight on that. Yeah. And, you know, I think we should definitely talk about that. And he came back to me and he said, well, the day you're going to drop your spear for camera, we can talk, but until then, fish are friends. I was like, what? It's like, it's, it's can you see how super counterproductive like you, the, you, this is yeah. if you if you're putting it aside you cannot just say commercial fishing is bad 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 you're not going to ask somebody from arkansas to only consume fish that he caught himself it's not going to work that way right yeah it's you know you have to think about realistic solution and so when i talk about sustainable per se commercial fishing and yeah. i got a lot of backlash because what, what, did, what did you say? I said that there was a way to do percent fishing that was more sustainable. Okay. So if you don't use fat, like a fishing aggreg- aggregated device, and people thought, oh, you, you're debating, like, you, why are you defending commercial fishing? It's terrible. They're catching a bunch of fish. I'm like, well, we have seven billions on the planet. So if you don't talk about how to feed those seven billions of people on the planet, yeah. the problem is always going to stay. Yeah. But you're not going to tell seven billion people, oh, by the way, no more meat. No more fish. Try to find something else. Good luck. It's not. Yeah. It's. It doesn't work like that. We have to talk about that. We have to talk about what's going on and how we can make it better. Yeah. Like but the the um, the Amazon forest thing going on right now, and the trend is everybody should stop eating meat. Actually, no. I was just in Texas, and there was this beautiful farm. Their carbon footprint was negative. It was actually absorbing carbon. Farming, when it's done well, it can be done well. And this is what we need to focus on. Yeah. But is, is that scalable, you know? To it is. Okay. It's just more expensive. Yeah, yeah. But then again, how can you tell Susan with six kids, which is single and working three jobs, right. that, you know what, Susan, from now on, your chicken is not going to cut three bucks. It's going to cut 17 instead. Yeah. So we've been used to 
but it's the transitions that we don't have a choice to make and it's a society now we're at a stage where we have to re we have to reinvent ourselves yeah because though cheap meat and stuff well it's destroying the entire planet so we have to find another way so so I, I get a little worked out about this no <laughs> uh, and that's and that's what you're passionate about and yeah, yeah. <laughs> It, it, but it's also crazy too, from listening to parts of your story, that th these some of these groups think like you're the problem. Yes. Th the girl who's going down. I mean, the maximum I think the maximum amount of fish you can shoot per dive is one, unless you're incredibly lucky and you happen yeah, to get two. Much. <laughs> but maybe two. But I mean, right? That's crazy. Yes. And you can only do so many dives even in a day, and you're usually only getting one fish, and you're taking it home and eating it. And yeah. I, I think it's uh, is it that hu is it the hunting piece that just bothers people? Because hunting's kind of. I guess so. I mean. Well, I mean, you you know, I mean, right? I mean, you get the bad comments. Do you think it's more the hunting? It, it's hard to tell. I just think that people seem to have become so sensitive. Yeah. About all of that stuff, because it has to be the hunting because line fishing is is socially acceptable. Right, that's my Spit point. Fishing? Well, I mean, it, not so much. Yeah, line fishing still gets some heat from other people. But what's interesting, you know, we're here in St. Pete, and there's boats out there right now, yeah. ton recreational guys like like you and me yeah. that are catching bait, maybe even a hundred little bait fish in their net, and then they're you know putting it on a hook to go catch a bigger fish. And many times they're just going to release for the sport. And I'm guilty of it. I'm, I'm right. Yeah. That's part of. Fishing, recreational fishing, unless you're using a, a, fi a fishing lure, on fish lure, but that seems to be fine to kill a yes. hundred fish to maybe kill. Let's just say you are going to harvest it, and I don't know. I, I don't. I, I don't get it. Like I feel bad for all the spearfish because it's tough. I can't do it. I love your quote about, oh yeah, you people in the lawn chair having your Budweiser beer. It's, <laughs> it's, I know you're being a little facetious, but I mean it was. It's so true. I mean, it's easy to go out there and sit in a boat and try to catch fish. It's incredibly hard, which is why not many people do it, to go down there and hunt and put yourself at risk, it's right? True. And, I mean, have sharks trying to eat the fish that you just shot because there's blood in the water. And Yeah, I mean, it I was, mean it's all it's it about this, this weird society standards that, that, that they're existing. It's, you know, it's, this, it's socially acceptable to go drag a marlin by a hook for hours – she didn't release it and he has good chances of dying that's fine but me shooting a hogfish like that i'm gonna eat that night it's not fine but then me grabbing lobsters is not fine or then eating veal is fine it's we just have this whole yeah. perfection of, of it's but it's, it's how you 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 raise i guess it's because you you we've been so detached from everything yeah. so now we just don't understand S but so again i realized when i started spivishing that i had a hunting instinct huh that just that, that we all do. I never knew it existed. <laughs> you think we all do, or is I think we all do. most of people. So tell like what is it, what was that like? Uh, like tell me, how did you know? Like you, was it just like oh, because I could track a fish for hours in the water, <laughs> <laughs> and then you got just a high off the whole thing. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. I was like, I'm not leaving until I find him. And I was like, oh, <laughs> 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 it's not for everybody, but it's it's. Then is the whole ethical debate. But do you think if you cannot? kill an animal does that mean that you should not be allowed to eat it or not i went land hunting for the first time a couple of years ago yeah. i cried the entire time really i couldn't stop crying couldn't stop crying Did you, you shot something yeah i shot okay. a deer and i was okay. like eh, kill baby i felt so <laughs> bad but then they skinned it it looked like nice and it looked like big pieces of meat and all of a sudden i was like "Ooh, i'm hungry and I felt like such an hypocrite i said you've been crying about bambi for the last two hours yeah. and all of a sudden when it looks like a burger you, you're hungry and you're all fine. And this is when I realized, like, okay, we're being pretty hypocrite when it comes to, yeah. to where our food is from. And we choose to have our emotions. And it's a very dangerous thing about social media right now is we get very emotional about, I mean, one of them, which is very controversial, <laughs> but it's like, you know, the, the, the dentist, I said that lion thing. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That, yeah, he got fried. He got, the, it, yeah. It, he had to move out of his house. Yeah, death uh, threats. Uh, death threats. Yeah. He had to leave, leave his practice. I mean, I, I do not understand what's the fun of shooting a lion. I, I, I definitely do not get that. But it's you know the money that he pay for that lion. Normally, I went to a few reserves in Africa, and they normally yeah. sell an older animal who's keeping the younger ones for breeding. Like there's reason why they pick that one. Right. They just not go. 
the safari between like oh this one looks big i'm gonna go after it it's it's very they yeah. buy a very specific animal with a tag on it yep. and the money goes to conservation like to breeding more and getting food and getting a bunch of guards because if there's no guards and there's poaching then all yeah. those animals get killed regardless right so it's you know it's like how society decides that they put all their emotions on a lion yeah but it veils words nothing it's when you're eating a baby yeah like it's so it's yeah i think now we're at a stage where you know what there's a big issue with food sourcing yeah. and to create a better future we need to take a step back understand our roots and what we want to do with them and that's part of your mission right it is, it is part of what i do yes because right now it's either we do that or we start growing meat in laboratories it's one of them you think that's going to happen it's and happening. kind of where we're going and same it's with happening. fish right i yeah. mean every, it's going to be it's happening so i've 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 I know a girl, she's 15, and she's already working in the lab and, and, and growing meat. And she said, so the purpose of the studies is to build those steaks. And you go to a grocery store, and the future is probably going to be about, like, we can have a chip. And you scan your chip, and it says, okay, today you, you're missing um, 20 grams of protein. You're missing that amount of fat, and you're going to buy a piece of meat, which is, which is exactly suits you need, you as a human. Mm. It's very scary. 3D printed, probably. It's <laughs> no, it's actually cellular no, growth, I'm which is crazy. So I had a panel with her. So it was vegan. Me and her was talking about Ew, me. Right? This is good. It was super interesting. Yeah, it was actually yeah. super fun. Some good conversations. But it's it is gonna have to be one of those three options or or, or a mix of the three yeah. because right now we're not we're not sustaining sustaining everybody. So let's let's keep it on the fishing side. Yeah, since sorry. You, and you were more <laughs> no, no. It's it's because we could do a whole other podcast about that part of it. But what, like, I mean, is there a number? Everyone wants to have one big problem, right? Like, meaning everyone wants one bad person to be able to point a finger and say this is the problem. Some say it's commercial fishing. Some say it's recreational fishing. Some say it's spear, which is the dumbest yeah. thing ever because you're taking the fewest amount, <laughs> um, and you're the smallest group. But in commercial fishing, there's clearly an argument, right? Because, I mean, in some cases, they're yes. using massive nets and tearing up the bottoms. There's a massive amount of bycatch. Uh, and then there's just overfishing in general. Yes. There's pollution. I mean, we talked about the plastics and just how much crap is in our ocean because we're sloppy people and not taking care of it and respecting it. Like, do you think there's one big problem? and if, Or is there one that you think is easier to solve, if not? It's, it's a hard question. I mean, of course, it's it's hard. It's it feels really overwhelming to to when we're facing big corporations dealing with this, this fish and seafood is the most traded commodity in the world. It is more than fish, more than more, more sorry, more than sugar, more than coffee, more than anything else. Mm. It's the number one. Fish in general. You yes. Okay. And a lot of the fish is caught in the South Pacific, then it's filled in China, then it's canned in Thailand, yeah. and then it's stickers back in the U.S. And, and not that regulated compared to some other things. It's hard because it goes to so many places, right. and then along the way, there's people putting seafood pro fraud in the middle and yeah, injecting and weird stuff. And, and yeah. There's a lot of stuff happening, yeah. and there's a bunch of organizations who's trying to demystify all of that. It's not black and white. Yeah. But again, even if you say, oh, I want to eat sustainable fish. Okay, what's sustainable mean for you? Does it mean that I can fish a tuna sustainably, but then by catching that, that tuna, I'm most sustainably catching everything around it and killing that, that population? So are you eating something sustainable or not? On mm. the other hand, if I'm eating in Canada, eating a tuna from French Polynesia, the carbon print is very high. So is that sustainable or not? So you have so many facets of what's sustainability and what is viable when it comes to to societies yeah. and what i'm telling to people too is that diversity is the key like try to walk away from your whole tuna salmon cod halibut type of or sea bass yeah. main your fish monger has a lot of stuff and you can go around and there's these things that you can eat around you just try to make sure hmm. that just and we, we think that we're useless in front of big corporation, but they're surviving because of us. Yep. There's nobody buys Once their again, stuff. Consumption, it's society, right? We gotta it is. Spin, it's, spin, it's, spin, spin. It's, it's, it's all about that. Yeah. And, you know, it's by choosing a product at the grocery store, 
it's it's very political these days because you you're dictating what type of planet do you want to live on. So if you're eating salmon from a farm, which is doing, which is polluting everywhere, then you you're giving them the money they need to keep doing it. If you take five minutes to Google two little things about okay, what type of salmon should I buy if that's really what I want to buy? Yeah. You should not really buy salmon, but different topic. Um, so and why why though, real quick? Um, salmon is not a species which is made for um, farming because it's carnivore. So you, you're still going to have overfishing occurring to feed them. Yeah. So it is not, it's, it's definitely not made for that. So the demand is so high that they have to keep up. And this is what they found to reduce the pressure in a wild salmon. Farm raised. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Fall salmon, wild salmon can be sustainable, but not enough to provide for the entire planet. Because everybody loves it. Yeah, I mean, there's so many better fish than that. Yeah, and you, you wonder eat. why. Was it like a marketing? Like you've you've heard that story about the Chilean sea bass, right? Yes. Like, you know, that they basically just slapped a new name on it. And yes, all of a exactly. sudden it made it sound real French and fancy. That's really sad that it's overfished because that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, like it's you can't really eat it anymore. Yeah. But it's, you know, when you go to a grocery store, the, anything that you buy – is actually showing what you want and how much you, you care. So you it's know, your vote, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So and instead of sharing videos of, you know, the wine forest burning, look at your label, check if there's an, an eco label on it that says, oh, this is sustainable. Be very careful of fake labels. There's a bunch of them. So how do you know, though? If it just says sustainably caught and, like, no explanation, no organization, that's, that's bullshit. Okay. So it needs to say uh, organization? Yes. Yeah, so you have okay. Ocean Wise, you have the MSC, okay. yeah. you have – it's there's a bunch of different organizations. Okay. Actually, I think Greenpeace have a label too. So you just have and to see, make I'm sure. Learned, I don't know this. So like that's good information. It's – yeah. Because no one's <laughs> teaching this stuff. No, nobody's talking yeah. about it because yeah. nobody – the corporation are not gaining anything by talking about yep. it. One of the good examples that I've been talking a lot these days is sunscreen. So when you go in the ocean – with your kids, you go swimming, you need reef safe sunscreen. You have to. It's the reef around the world are all dying and country is contributing to quite a quite a bit of it. Yeah. And the other day I went to the store, I was so happy, I grabbed my sunscreen, it says reef friendly, so I'm like, Yes. I go to the beach. And I post a photo because I'm like, Oh look people, I got a reef friendly sunscreen and um, a friend of mine sent me a message and she says, That that, that that's not reef friendly reef safe. So what I mean, it says, says re-safe on top. So now it says re-friendly. Turn around. So there's eight chemical ingredients that should not be in your sunscreen. They had four of them instead oh of four. So they call themselves re-friendly. So this, everything wow. is made so hard for the consumer. It's greenwashing at its best as they make you believe. Yeah. Just doing my simple thing by making green check on something. It's just... And it makes you think yeah, that subconsciously, it's, I, you're like, oh yeah, I'm a victim of that too. I yeah. always do that. And you just grab something thinking yeah. like it's, it's, it's just conscious thinking that oh, it's green, so it must be good. Yeah. Or there's a picture of a cow on a on a, on a pasture and it looks green, and it looks nice. It's so so that, happy. That's <laughs> must, yeah, it, it looks so happy, and it must be good. Uh, Fish is the same thing. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. There's no information out there. It's hard to do the right thing. It's really hard to do the right thing. Do you think they'll? there'll ever come a time if we don't fix some of these problems where I think there's always going to be some form of seafood, right? But that we'll have to almost, ha almost like with fishing here in Florida where you have seasons where, hey, you can only buy this fish during this season. They just close it down completely. Yeah. Is, you, is that even It's good. They have to. That's what, that's, that's what, we need to stop acting like big babies. It's, you know what? It's not grouper season. Well, guess what? You're going to eat something else. Yeah. It's not strawberry season. Well, guess what? You're going to eat something else. Yeah, it's, it's good, just good about point. Um, it's but then again, the strawberries, they find a way to sell them all year long. They taste gross, though. <laughs> they don't <laughs> taste good. I don't know if you ever had strawberries in February, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't taste like strawberry too so, much. <laughs> so you're very well traveled. Are you, are you seeing, like, solutions in other places? Because there's some countries who have it worse than us, at least, yes. right? I mean, there's some countries who have depleted a lot of their natural resources, including the fish around their islands. The sad reality of things is that it's a lot of the developed countries that took advantage of a lot of the remote ones. Yeah. And it, it left a lot of them in very precarious situations when it comes to to have resources around them. And 
it kind of triggered a snowball that so a good example was when I was in Zanzibar um, off the coast of Tanzania and I'm talking to this guy on the beach and he says so I'm like why are you using nets on reefs and you're killing everything and he's like why are you using dynamite this is crazy you're destroying everything and he says he says, well, the commercial vessels have been fishing here all those years. He said, how do I feed my family? I'm living in an island. So I was like, uh. <laughs> so he said, honestly, if I have bigger dynamite, I would, I would dynamite even more. If I have bigger nets, I would have fish with never being in nets. Just for survival. For survival, because it's, it's, it's all they have. So there's, there's a problem. Yeah. There's definitely a problem. And because we're not getting any information, it's just everything is happening behind our backs and it's 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 hard when i was in the marshall islands and the south pacific they were telling me so he was talking to me about our illegal vessels that come fish and you know they try to but it's really hard to monitor them so i said oh really oh which country is it i was expecting like china japan or, like united states canada france portugal uh, i was like oh okay so it's actually we're all part of the problem yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 everybody so what what's the solution the solution is it's going to be really hard, but we're going to have to have actual scientists dictate what, what, what's the next step. Yeah, we're going to have we're going to need to close season, and it's it's so we're going to have to start. So there's a, there's a thing where you fish as much as you can to a sustainable level. So you kind of have to reach that everywhere. Right now we're we're going over that. We're very close to the tipping point where there's going to be there's going to be no recovery, and we have to do something before that. That's but the sad part, right? Because yes. no one ever the the average person never is going to step up and care until it's too late, usually or close yes, to it, right? Exactly. It's like past the tipping point. Exactly. Before the, it becomes like a social cultural thing, we're like, all right, I'm behind this. But is a billion dollars company going to decide to become way smaller and cut so hundreds of thousands of jobs around the world from fishermen? I mean, it's th the problem is so deep. Is yeah. th there's tuna fishing boats. It's modern slavery. They're not being paid. They take their passports away, and they work on boats for 14 months. I went on a ship, and I was the first woman they saw in 12 months. It was – it was th I had a very big one piece. <laughs> <laughs> full, <laughs> full wetsuit and a They poncho. were taking photos from that. I was like, oh, my God, okay, this is weird. <laughs> And it's it's so you know the problem is it's just it's just so deep. It's yeah. it's, it's, this comes with fraud, slavery, this billion dollars industry, which is really hard to shake down. Yeah, and, and I mean to their defense, it is a lot of jobs, and that's what they use when the, with their lobbyists, right? Because the lobbyists it tell is. a congressman or a president, whoever, hey, like if this goes away, we're going to lose ten thousand jobs, which are ten thousand voters, and and no one wants to hear someone losing a job. Yeah, but you know, if 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 they were doing, if they were using those people, the fisheries still could exist if they would do the right thing, and that was that would still would be possible. But again, this is why I think that even if it sounds that we're useless, the the it starts with us. Yeah. Because we're the one getting all of that stuff. Yeah. And we're not at a stage right now with the planet where we can tell ourselves, "Well, it's there, so I'm just going to take it." We can't do that anymore. Are are you seeing it worse when you're diving in certain places? Like when you've yes. revisited? Yes. You are. There's places when I've been, you know, a few years later and there's no fish anymore or there's more pollution and yeah. mm -hmm. we see plastic bags a lot. Cigarette butts, balloons. What about straws? I heard a lot of balloons. Don't use balloons. Your kids don't need it. Yeah. They'll be fine. They'll stop crying after five minutes. I heard straws. They're like little caprice, like the straws because they fly off. It's not like people are. Does that make sense? You see that? Someone told me that one time about how bad. I mean, you see, you you see some once once in a while. Okay. I I do not believe that the biggest plastic okay. in the ocean right now, but it's a, it, it's still a problem. It's it's good that they they revert that and yeah. now it now they're attacking the the. Yeah. We all need to go back to drinking old school water right out of the. I I completely agree. I mean, if you sit on a flight, then the amount yeah. of plastic is being used, and it's yeah. how come. Uh, 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 sorry, I have the companies like American Airlines or Delta. How come they haven't come with cleaner fuel already? Yeah. It's, it's really hard. Yeah. 
Um, well, if you take a lot of flights, what you can do, though, is there's organizations online where you can offset your carbon footprint. Uh, how? I think Delta has it on their website. You calculate, okay, I'm going from Tampa Bay to New York City. where two people. So it's going to tell you, okay, you have to make a donation of $7.25. And you make that thing, and then you have this organism that's going to plant trees or, or mm. put some windmills, and it's going to compensate your carbon. So traveling, it's 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 really good. it's really not expensive, and it's really worth it. Cool. If everybody would do it, it would make a huge difference. Yes, that's the problem, right? Getting everyone to yeah, everybody to do <laughs> it. Um, so I'm curious because I f I think it was on the other Joe show, the Joe Rogan show, where you mentioned it was Marshall Islands, right? Yes. That you were about to go to, and it was was it farm raised fit? What was it? Or what were they? So the Marshall Islands are providing something around 25% of the world tuna. Dang. There's a lot of tuna coming from Dang. there, especially at Skipjack, mainly. And it was a very interesting island, and there are some boats that are doing the right thing. Okay. And I saw it, and yes, they're using Persane, but they're not using uh, fads, so they, they had the bycatch is very little. But then, you know, if you have 10 ships doing the right thing and then you have 250 doing the wrong thing around, it's yeah. really hard to to make a, re a real difference. Yeah. But they have a really cool system, the people that, that live on the island. They do have, um, they have really big families and you have only a few members working for two months and then they make rotations. Hmm. So it's like if we're in the same family and we're five more people, you and me are working for two months while the other are doing nothing and enjoying their life. Yeah. And then we rotate and it's our turn to do nothing for two months. Huh. The whole it's culture cool, is like right? that? A, a lot of it was uh -huh. like that. Wow. I thought it was super interesting. It is. <laughs> but that's – so clearly that whole – their biggest industry is fishing then. Yes. And I mean, they know. And now, now they're facing this problem when they're like, okay, if we're not protecting those fish because yeah. they've been collecting money from different countries – and they realize that, oh, okay, if, if we let all of those people doing what they want, yeah. then then So what are they years, doing about it? Like in terms of the c policing these bad guys? Um, they just made, um, I mean, just it's, it's a few years back, they just made um, an agreement, which is a Nauru agreement. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> my, my, my Polynesian is not that great. <laughs> uh, and it's, uh, so it's a bunch of out of the islands. Okay. And they have... Something like between Russia and New York, words of ocean. It's just something, something crazy. And um, they have a lot, one of the biggest and fishiest fishing ground. But then they start realizing, okay, we're a tiny little island, so we better like get our shit together yeah. because we're gonna get crushed, with, especially with illegal fishing and everything. Yeah. So now they made this little agreement, and they they're monitoring the islands, and they raise money, and they manage to actually try to control them pretty well. Cool. And they really bear in mind sustainability, so that's really nice to see. Cool. Um, what do you think about the these fish farms? I mean, obviously it's happening with fish like salmon. Is that a, is that are people talking about that about like farm raising fish or you know or, or other unique ways to like your your little 15-year-old friend who's doing stuff with meat? I mean, um, but the, the the thing about farming is that, like everything else, it, it can be done right. Like salmon fishing can be very detrimental. Trout fishing is really good. Why don't we eat trout instead? It's you know, it's it's all about a demand that's out there. Yeah. It's you know, it's a, they taste pretty much they're very similar to each other. Yeah. Especially when it's smoked salmon, smoked trout. Actually, I posted about that uh, today. They were selling trout, and it says smoked salmon in the package. It's like it's just about what people want, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's just this weird conscious that we want certain products. But it's so there are ways to do things right. So mussels, super good, super good for the environment, super sustainable. Mussels, clams, so all the shellfish, super good. So there's, there are ways to do things. Yeah. We just have to learn how to vary our diet, and this is that's the key. Vary your diet. Just don't eat the same thing. Look, look around you, like everywhere. You live, you're going to have local product at some point yeah. and just so learn how to cook with it. What, what do you do? You're just always experimenting? Yes. With it, yeah. Yes. So I really want to be working on a cookbook because I, well, another yeah, one. Speaking of that, girl. But I want <laughs> uh, you guys, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're on the podcast, we'll, uh, we'll put a link to it. Sad news so, is in French. 
I don't speak any French, <laughs> nor do I know how to uh, read in French. I'm working in the English version. So tell me about it. That's pretty awesome. It's like a legit 200-something page <laughs> book. <laughs> well, it's, How long it's, did that take? It took probably about a year. Okay, yeah. And I'm just, I just really wanted to share with people the fact that, because I get a lot of messages uh, from people asking me, oh, well, I should cook fish, why well, I should do that. And it's, it's, I wanted a cookbook where everything was very simple. Yeah. Everything was maximum eight ingredients. Because you, you, for those of you who haven't seen her on Instagram or some of your old pics, like you, you do a lot of cooking. It's yes. all stuff that you're shooting. Sometimes you might be on an island where there's not a Publix or a Kroger or whatever down the street, right? Like yes. You're bringing a couple little things of spice in your bag? Or what are I, you doing? I do travel with spices. <laughs> <laughs> I I live in the Bahamas for a year. Yeah. And the grocery store over there is barely anything. You have a food boat coming on Thursday with veggies that were frozen on the way. Mm. So I don't know if you ever ate like a tomato that was frozen previously, but it doesn't mm. look that great. I'll probably pass on that. It's but I've never ate better than that year and this is why I came up with the idea of this. This ah. was really to to share the fact that you can make amazing food. Just by going to the grocery store and getting just a little bit of ingredients, yeah. and you can make something fantastic. You don't need to be a chef. You don't need to some fancy stuff that comes from super far away. You can sort of Get it. inform yourself of what's in season right now, especially when it comes to fishing, like reproduction season and yeah. what is sustainable to eat, and then you can eat fantastically just by doing that. So what's your favorite? Oh, and that's a good question. Um, i say all of them. Actually, my favorite, and this one is not even fish. <laughs> Shame on you. It's also really Valentine. fat. Valentine. <laughs> it's really fat, too. That's this one. Oh, it looks good. It's a whole loaf of bread. Oh, and, and it's got my name on it, the Joey. <laughs> you cut a hole in it, and you put entire cheese, and you bake it in the oven, and you break the crust on the side, and you dip it. That's so joking. That's awesome. <laughs> so what? what is, if you're down there... Uh, what is your favorite fish? Like, what's the one you're like, all right, this, do you have one, a favorite fish you personally to, to eat? I have a few, but I, I, I like, you know, if I'm eating grouper for an entire week, then I'm going to be bored. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I, I like trying new species and there's a lot of fish that are considered trash, fi trash fish that you can eat and it's actually really good if you, if you cook it well. Like, like which one? Like, um, yellow jack, I guess. Like a lot okay. of people throw it back. Thinking it's not good. It's fantastic. Huh. Cooked and raw. Um, I love lionfish. Of course, it's also invasive, so it's yeah. just fantastic. It's one of the best fish I ever had. Kill them all. Yes. Right. Um, I love hogfish. Sally's very blurry right now if it's vulnerable or not. Yeah. So it's... it's. Yeah, they're so delicious. But they're so good. Yeah. <laughs> There's not really commercial fishing-ish when it comes to... Yeah. It exists, yes, but... It's the most of the hogfish harvested or recreational yep. fishermen. So what's on the bucket list? Where are you going next? What are you gonna shoot? Um, I don't know. But that's the thing. I, 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 I don't I don't chase fish anymore. I'm just I go anywhere and I'm gonna ask, okay, what's the species do you have? What can I shoot? What's sustainable to shoot? And yeah. I'm just I'm just happy to grab food and and eat it. Yeah. And I made a post about croupers, which I didn't know. Because I heard a lot of stuff. So, I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to make my own research to know. Because grouper is one of a lot of recreational fishermen's favorite. Yeah. And what I find out is basically if you shoot a grouper which is too small, then it hasn't had time to breed. So, it has to be, I think it was about 80 centimeters. Sorry, Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> but then if you go over like 110, then it's, it's, it's a too big of a breeder to be taking away. So there's only a very small window of when a grouper should be harvested. And it's 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 about, especially when you're spearfish, you're lionfish, it's really about reading about it and making sure that you're doing the right thing. Yeah. So <laughs> I got a question because I have I've been underwater a lot, and maybe it's because I haven't done it as much. I'm guessing it's going to be the answer. But how – when you're down there and it's the heat of the moment – you're holding <laughs> your breath. Maybe your vision's a little bit, or maybe you're so laser focused. I don't know. How do you know how big a fish is? I mean, does that make sense? You can like, see, especially that, and and spearfishing most of the time you're hunting, right? So you're waiting. 
and you're observing the fish and you see yeah. it coming slowly and when it turns you have a pretty good idea of its size because you're in a hunt so did what you're doing you're, you're studying observing this thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're talking it so it's you have a pretty good idea you have time to 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 see that yeah <laughs> god bless you <laughs> it's so, a fun sport i like it it's very rewarding eating something that you caught yourself so are you inspiring uh, a lot of people like are you getting a lot of cool messages from like other other girls guys saying hey you inspire me to try this out to take a free diving class and like are you, are you seeing it grow i guess is my question yes it is it's it's, it's I, it makes me very happy to see that people are really getting into it cool. because it's now this this new movement where people want to know where their food is from and they're getting more interested slowly but surely and spearfishing is just one of the super fun way to to do that. I mean, spearfishing is more fun than planting tomato. <laughs> well, it depends for who, but for me, it's more fun. I agree. <laughs> so, and your advice obviously is to take a free diving course or class oh yeah you should not get underwater without yeah. a free diving class yeah not because you wouldn't be able to hold your breath or anything like that just because if there's an emergency situation just knowing what to do can save your life and your buddy's life yeah and it's it takes two days yeah and then one day is all about safety for a reason right I exactly mean, yeah. it's yeah. you know if somebody passes out you need to know what's what's going on yeah. and it i pass out on the water you do a couple of years ago you like three years black ago out, like, i blacked out wow and I was in the Bahamas, and I was just, I remember it being on my way back. I was pretty deep. I was at about 80, 80 I think it was 85 feet. And I, I'm aiming at a pole spear with a grouper, and I missed it. So it went a little bit further, so I chased it, and I missed it again. And I just realized, like, oh, I'm pretty deep, and I've been down for a really long time. And I it was just, like, kind of a little bit of panic of the moment. All my air went out. So I, I, I was going up, and I could feel, like, I was feeling that I was losing consciousness. You start making like weird movements because you your brain is shutting down. Yeah, yeah. And I just remember fitting back up and just telling myself, "Well, I I hope he's watching me because if he's not watching me, I'm dead." And I knew it, and I knew that, and I was trying to stay as calm as I could. And this is spearfishing is a team sport, and this is what people tend to forget. Yeah, it's a team sport. It's not about who shoots the biggest fish or the most fish. You shoot a fish as a team. Yeah. And this is how it should always be. It's I shoot a fish. My partner is looking if I'm not drowning, if there's no sharks around me, if, if everything is safe, so I'm not getting yeah. tangled. It's, you need somebody to watch your back constantly at all times. So, and what's the rest of the story? So, uh, do you remember? like? So, I popped up okay. and I don't remember. I passed out. Okay, but you remember hitting the surface? I hit the okay, surface. Okay, which yeah. Even if you hit the surface, you're going to do this. Yeah. So, then you drift and that's when it can be got dangerous. It, got it. Right, right, it's when you die. And then, so my friend of mine, he grabbed me and he, he lost his brother to a blackout. So wow. he was very vigilant in the water and he was very safe and he grabbed me and he took my mask off and he woke me up and he put him back on, he put me back on the boat. Wow. But it's, 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 you have to dive with people that you trust that, yeah. you know, that I'm going to be selfish and go chase a fish without forgetting you behind. Yeah. It's really, really, really important. All the people that I know that lost their lives and passed away are always very experienced people. It's you in the ocean, yep. you're human. The ocean, everything in the ocean is faster and more agile than you. Even the tiniest little fish are going to swim faster than you will. And it's a place that makes you very humble because you have to swallow your ego. And it's it's the second when you start your ego thinking that you, you're better and you don't need safety. Yeah. This is when accidents happen. Man. that you're a plumber, a mayor, yeah. or a billionaire, the ocean's not going to make a difference. Yeah, everyone's kind of equal down there, right? Pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> as, in terms of humans. <laughs> yep. I don't know about the different sharks. Golly. Um, so what's the next trip? You have one coming up, right? You're going I'm going somewhere? to the Bahamas tomorrow. Oh, cool. Yes. <laughs> My favorite place. <laughs> and what are you going to do? Um, I'm just I'm – I'm going for a shoot okay. pretty much. Cool. I'm very happy with that. Cool. All right, so tell me about the next book. I know you have this one. Is it – can we ever read it, like us Americans who don't know how to speak multiple I, I'm, I'm working on an English version. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I do want to do a next one where I want to divide it in, in different seasons cool. so people can have access to, to everything and so you know another, what, you what the a, options. And you have another book coming? Like, your mind's always spinning? You, you my, my, my mind is never resting. It's starting. <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> and then the, the swimsuit with your sis? Yes, and the swimsuit and just – 
Is that like, but is that happening now or is that like a year out? When are we going to like? I, I I don't know yet. It's pretty hard. I'm hoping to have it ready for the winter slash Australian summer. Cool. We're working very hard on that. And it's with, pl- it was it with plastic? Well, tell me. Yes. Yeah, so it's basically they're taking bottles and fish nets out of the ocean and they, they transform to plastic and they, they make fabric out of it. Too cool. That's awesome. All right. So any other like big, big goals? Any other? I'll Just see. I'll take it one day at a time yeah. and it's, uh, I keep, keep hustling every day and let's see what's going to land on my lap. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm open to everything and I'm kind of happy of not knowing what's, what's in the bag for me. That's awesome. <laughs> and just keep facing the fears. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what a story. Uh, what a story. So where can everyone find you? Instagram is the number one yes. spot? Yes. I, I I tried very hard to respond to every question that I get. Yeah, you do it like an amazing job. I'm, I'm really trying. So if you have questions about anxiety or even bullying or fishing or anything like that, just drop me a message. If I don't see it because I'm being overwhelmed, just keep copying and pasting your message i'll see it at one point and i'll respond i promise (laughs) yeah and yeah thank you for even reaching back out because i reach out a lot of people just like you do about getting interviews and you never know and like you responded real quickly (laughs) and so easy to work with especially considering you're here for like a day so we came here we're in her place and she's like yeah i haven't i haven't been here in like a month or something (laughs) it's like i haven't even seen my roommate in a month and now you're leaving the bahamas Yes. So cool. I was going to go. So cool. <laughs> well, awesome. Everyone, please go check out Valentine or Valentine. Valentine is fine. Okay. <laughs> I want to make sure. I want to me- make make mama mad. <laughs> she, what does she call no, you? No, she's fine. Valentin? Valentin. Valentin, okay. okay. Valentin <laughs> Thomas. Friend. And uh, YouTube or any, anywhere else? Like you, are you putting videos? No, just Instagram for now. Okay. I'm working on a blog to get all of that very complex information and seafood out there. And cool. this is going to be one of my next near future goal well i know a lot of people will want the english version it's crazy because we just put a couple of recipes on our blog yeah uh one for mahi mahi like a couple of the you know most popular fish grouper and snapper it's crazy how like how many clicks that that thing gets oh i'll give you some if you want recipes oh heck yeah i just can't read this stuff it looks like it's okay i'll give you a few recipes in my book you can pick the one you want and be awesome yeah i can share a recipe i also have a cooking page it's called valentine's cooking it's a website. No, it's it's an, an I had two Instagram pages. Oh, I okay, a small okay. cooking one, which is literally just about food and recipes. And oh, I didn't even know that. Everything that I do. <laughs> how, many, how many fans or followers or whatever? I think I'm a little bit below 3,000. Okay. It's small, but it's just, you know, it's everything is easy to do. It's, yeah. it's, it's super easy to make at home. Again, very little amount of ingredients. It's just all about enjoying the food and making yeah. it as simple and fantastic as possible. Cool. Well, I'm going to encourage you to do a YouTube channel too when you ever get time. If you ever get time. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, the cooking part, <laughs> I was, wish. one, the adventure and then seeing you dive and then, you know, bringing it from, you know, basically getting on the boat in the water to shooting it and cooking yeah. it. That would be awesome. <laughs> so. Well, thank you. <laughs> cool. Well, everyone, definitely check out Valentine. Make sure to follow her, give her some love, comment on her post. And uh, if you do know how to speak French, then definitely <laughs> go buy the book and stay tuned for uh, future ones uh, coming out. And uh, if you want to go see the show notes or get links to anything we talked about, go to saltstrong.com forward slash podcast. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next episode. And Thank for you, you on the podcast, we're waving at the camera like, <laughs> peace, we out. <laughs> cool. That was awesome. Oh. Good job. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having